Welcome to today's Creativity Out of Crisis webinar hosted by Providence Heights. If you are having any technical difficulties during this webinar, please email info at providenceheights.org and someone will assist you. My name is Polly Showalter and I represent the Executive Board of Providence Heights, a Christian nonprofit organization in King County who believes that every individual should have a home and thrive in pursuit of God's purpose. As an organization, Providence Heights has paused normal activities to bring leaders together who will inspire you. And as you wade through uncertainty to empower you as you think beyond COVID-19 and the challenges that it's brought upon your family and your friends and your coworkers. And lastly, to encourage you towards creativity and hope. Soak in the stories and let this be an opportunity of growth. In lieu of the high profile nature of our speakers and gratitude for your time for being with us today, we are going to do our best to try to keep this webinar to 45 minutes. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A box down below on the lower portion of your screen. We will do our best to answer your questions after the webinar. We will be joined by some extraordinary leaders today. Together, they represent government, business, and nonprofit perspectives. Mike Lindell, CEO of MyPillow, will talk to us about business innovation. Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers, representing Washington's 5th District, will share a message of hope. And the very talented Broadway actress and vocalist, Laura Michelle Kelly, will conclude our webinar with a song of worship. Now it is my privilege to introduce Christine Soule, the CEO of Providence Heights and the visionary behind bringing us all together today. Christine has many notable qualities, but one that truly encapsulates who she is would be her ability to spark enthusiasm into the lives of those around her. And today she is going to motivate us to overcome whatever it is that's holding us back from shining our light during this crucial and opportune time. Christine wants every woman in need to have a home, but do you know what she wants more than that? She wants them to truly know the Jesus that loves and redeems. Without further ado, please welcome Christine Soule. Hello, thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Creativity Out of Crisis. Thank you to Polly for introducing us and to all of our valued panelists that we have today. You are in for a great treat. And thank you to our guests. Thank you for all of you for joining us in this um, exciting time that we have together. Now, I was first going to just introduce Mike with this really amazing bio that he has given to me. But, you know, as I was praying and reading my Bible this morning, I just got wrecked by the Holy Spirit. And I feel like, you know, I, I gave this webinar to God and now God has something to say about it. So as I was reading in Acts 16 this morning, I was reading about Paul and Silas going to Philippi. And when they had gone to Philippi, it really speaks about three different types of people. You have the entrepreneur, the business person, and that's like Mike. Then you have the hopeless cause. Ugh, wow, that'd be me. <laughs> and then you had a political figure, the jailer. And that's kind of like Kathy. And as I sat there journaling this morning, I wrote it all down and I went, wow, look at that. And you know, the thing that took place in Philippi with those three people and those three people groups really is that it spread. God's word spread all across. The good news spread all across the country. And so that is my prayer today, that this good news could spread to all people and that they could be encouraged and inspired and find hope in the midst of, of tragedy right now. And so, you know, I, as I had pondered about these two speakers that we have in particular, it's really great the way that I had met them. So I met Mike Lindell at a great big event and he was the speaker and it was epic and I would have been totally satisfied with just that. But you know what? A friend introduced us afterwards and we shut the place down. It felt like hours that we just talked and connected. I was encouraged. I was inspired and I was motivated. And that felt like such a blessing to me. 
So then I meet Kathy McMorris Rogers, same deal, great big event, all these people, epic. I was so satisfied with, with what I had experienced. But then a friend introduced us and we shut the place down and we talked for what felt like hours. And you know what? Today, the reason I'm doing this webinar is because I want to, I have a heart to share everything that I get to experience. And so I wanted all of you guys to have that same experience. So I don't want you to see Mike as, wow, that, that famous guy who does my pillow or Kathy as that, that out of, um, out of reach, uh, Congresswoman who's on that big stage and platform, but you don't really get to know her. Instead, I want to come to you today and like Mike and Kathy are sitting at your living room couch, just having a conversation with you where you could experience that same kind of encouragement and inspiration that I had re received. So um, Mike Lindell, gosh, he's epic. The My Pillow guy, he also has the Lindell Recovery Network. And I'm just so excited for him to share with you. Yeah, as Providence Heights would say it, he's freaking awesome. So, Mike, tell us, tell us about what this journey has been like for you. Hello, everyone. Um, um, I, I, I want to say that um, I want to bring so, a lot of encouragement right now. I want to, I'll kind of piece this together, but since, uh, since the beginning of this, you got to go back about a month and a half. And, you know, we became as my company, we started to be, um, get real involved is in, uh, in making face masks, get to that point of making face masks. Um, that part all, went all the way up to the, uh, if you all see me at this speech from the Rose Garden. Uh, when I did that, that was very, when I got to that, I'm going to tell a little bit about that. Right before this pandemic, I had, I had reached out, a, a, um, I was talking to this guy last fall, and he said, how do we get our country, Mike, back to God? How do we get, you know, we've taken God out of everything. We turned it back on God. And, and, and he goes, it would, and he looks at me and he says, it would take the Great Depression because people don't even reach out to, to God until, unless something bad is happening. And I said, I looked at him, I said, no, in the Great Depression, they had, um, they had God, but they were praying for physical things. I said, we have something better than that. We have addiction. And I said, everyone's affected by addiction now, no matter how many forks you eat with. And I said, addiction in their families, you know, addicts in their families, um, who's reaching out more for hope than, their, than addicts? And they said, we have an opportunity here um, for the biggest revival in history. Now, remember, this was last fall. So, and I had over two years, I had set up the, this amazing network that was going to get ready to launch this spring. And involving 60,000 churches and 5,000 faith-based treatment centers and involving all these things I call hope matches. And any, they've been working on it over the last couple of years. And God had put all these connections to me that have brought me all these divine appointments on levels you can't even imagine from, from uh, presidents in other countries to presidents here to, to faith-based leaders all over the world. And this was, uh, and I was so excited to get this launch because I thought that you know, I had this, you know, that had this big platform for me to use. And, but then along came the pandemic. Okay. So this virus thing comes in and, and with my company, I, I, they did two things there. One is when I went in to go all in to make face masks, I made it very safe because for my employees, this is so key what I'm going to tell you in a little bit. The, I made it so safe. That came first is because I wanted my employees, you're going to go against the green. I knew this was coming where all of a sudden when we're shut down and people are getting scared, workers aren't going to want to come to work. And I don't want them coming to work if they're not safe. So I had to weigh these, me as, a, as an essential business being open, I'm going, okay, well, we're going to do something before this, before recommendations even came out. We, a person comes through the door, 
And one at a time, they come through, they, got, they have to have a mask on when they come through, they get sanitizer put on, they wash their hands, sanitizer, then they go to their workstation with a sewing machine, which is eight feet, not six, enough space in between. We, I put in a policy, they get to take breaks whenever they want, so they can be alone, um, or, you know, or with their friends, someone they trust, whatever, that, they, that they're both the same. Well, anyway, so I put in these safe practices. Out of that, my employees, I think it's almost 100% came to work because they felt safe, okay? And we've had no problems. Now, then I get a call from the White House, from the Vice President's office uh, to be invited there to, um, to be a, at a round table. And they actually gave me a, a um, they said to write, I've been invited before to a round table. And, and uh, they said, well, can you write some remarks? And... Um, and I'm going, why do we have to write remarks to be approved? This is a round table. I, you know, I told my guys, we were quick wrote it. I said, you know, they wanted to know what we were doing as a company. So I'm writing down all that. We wrote down all these remarks. I go, yeah, guys, I'm just going to, it's just a round table. Okay. So I get to Washington, D.C. And I go in there and I, I get there early about two o'clock. And I'm in there for an, about an hour talking to Secret Service stuff. I've been there before. And, they, and we go into the round table. It's just the vice president, four other CEOs, myself. And we go around the table and tell them how much we're doing to help the country, what ideas we have on the ground, what other companies are doing, what's the temperature of the people, I mean, how are they feeling? And the president came in and we kind of did that again. Well, then, then he, we, got, we got up to leave and the vice president, I go, why, why didn't we read our remarks? And he goes, well, he says, you're going to read them out at the Rose Garden. The president might call you up. So I'm going, okay. Well, then I'm, they went to, we went to by the Oval Office and he's talking to the other CEOs and I'm going, and, I, and this is the actual sheet, my remarks. Well, I said, I'm not going to, you know, I, I want to give a message to the people, a message of hope, you know, because I'm such in the public's eye. And, and so I write this down. Here's the actual sheet on the back here. These are my notes. I couldn't even read it. I'm writing this down. I was going to recopy it. And I feel like God was just giving me this download. And I'm going, now they get up, they go, come on, we're going out to the Rose Garden. And I'm going, I didn't get a chance to copy. So as I'm going out, I'm praying, going, God, please let me read my writing. If this is you, if you want me to read this, you make this happen. It was like putting a fleece out in the Bible. I'm going, I go, I don't know how I would read this because your, your marks had to get pre-approved. Anyway, and I don't know if you all know where I was sitting. They put me by a divine appointment. I'm sitting right, right in front of the president and the vice president. And then he calls me up and my son knew I was nervous. He seen my, he's watching me on TV. One of my sons going, um, he's going to be speaking. He's <laughs> and, uh, and anyway, they, I, I, we hadn't practiced. So I went right up when the president invited me up, which made it all the other CEOs kind of stand over here. We were supposed to go around this way. Well, anyway, as you all probably know, if you can't, you can look it up online. But I read my blah, blah, blah stuff. And then I, I turned to the president and said, can I read something off the cuff? And he said, Sure. Well, you know, what I read was God gave us grace on November 8, 2016 to change our, the course we were on. God had been taken out of our schools and a nation had turned his back on God. I encourage everyone to take this time to get in the word, read our Bibles and spend time with our families. And then I'm following the arrows down. I said, and in a short few years, our president gave us so much hope just a few short months ago with the best economy, lowest unemployment, and wages going up, et cetera. With our great president, vice president, and this administration, and all the great people in our country praying daily, we will all get through this and get back to a safer and uh, or a place uh, stronger and safer than ever. Now, Everyone knows that went viral all over the country. They're selling out Bibles everywhere, even, even uh, um, to a place I don't like. It starts with Tar and ends with Get Target. They're selling out children's Bibles. It's like crazy. I always give them a hard time because they have too many bathrooms. Um, but, they, uh, but anyway, I, um, I went back into the White House, and the vice president same to me, said to me, he goes, Mike, you have opened up the heavens. And we talked about it. I said, yeah. We are in the greatest revival in history. This is not what I talked about with addiction. This is, we're all, everybody's at home looking for hope. And, and I said on a program, and I'm going to tell you, finish the White House thing. The president, vice president says, Mike, you've opened up the heavens. And he said, I'm thinking, what's, you know, 
you know, I, I didn't even dawn on me how big it was. It went world, around the world, right? Well, I sat there for another two hours with the president. And when I left the White House, I got my phone back. I had 750 text messages. I'm going, that many people have my phone and phone number. And, and but when I left there, now this is what I want everybody to hear. I left there with, I'm an optimist like you wouldn't believe, okay? I left there with 10 times more optimist, you know, being more optimist. The stuff I seen there, how our president was, I'm hearing stuff behind the scenes, you know, that this took, uh, you know, this would take six months. He did it in four days, you know? I mean, his, and all these things, just the, um, for even from the last time I was at the White, White House to now, I could just feel God's presence there. He had his hand in every single person that the president's got surrounding him. And, you know, politics affects, I realize now how it affects everything, especially biblically, and especially um, um, with, the, with the spiritual warfare going on in our country. And here, for me, I left there, and I've had 94 interviews since that day. It was the, it just went all over the world. Now, let me tell you what I've been telling him. I've said, you know what? I switched my whole message, you know, because uh, with, uh, you know, obviously with my addiction, with my recovery network that I was going to launch, it, it isn't just the, the, the end game isn't to get people off of drugs and, and, or whatever their addiction is, whether it's porn, overeat, whatever it is, it's to get them to Jesus. And so what I told, what I did is I said, here's what we can do now. I said, all these people that are living in fear at home, I said, are living in fear right now and that this, in this anomaly in history, everyone that has the Lord, you know, let this be the biggest awakening and reach out in history. Call out, you got time to get your phone, FaceTime someone that doesn't have the Lord and say, how are you doing? Spread our, spread our love, spread it out and talk to people and make this, to, you know, spread the hope. And that hope is Jesus. And let me tell you, I will say this, which you all don't know what's coming. There are so many good things this next week, week and a half that I know personally, because I've been like an informational vacuum cleaner taken from all over the country. I know um, they've tried to uh, politicize things, even in my own state here in Minnesota. They interviewed me this morning. And they interviewed me this morning on Newsmax, and I said I was very upset with the protesters in Minnesota that went down to the governor's office. Now, this may be a state where I might even run, but I'll tell you what, the message was wrong. They went down there with no masks. They, some of them made it into a Trump rally or a Trump, you know, whatever. This isn't a political thing we're in. What I said the message should have been is they should have went down there with masks on, six feet apart, and said, Please open Minnesota and we will do it safely. Tell us what we need to do, Governor. Put your seal on our businesses of how we can, you know, open these safely. We have businesses open now and a lot of them aren't even doing safe practices because they don't know. They don't know. And, they, and I'm telling you, we can all get back to work if everybody would follow simple, safe practices. You get a seal up there and you, if I know that this would be, let's say it's Minnesota, here's a governor's seal of approval. And here's a list of how this business should be on when you walk inside. A mask, anybody can wear anything over their face and I'm protected from you. You go in there and you get in there and uh, I, if I see that seal, I know I'm going to be safe. But if I go in there and nobody's wearing masks, it's like business as usual, at least in the beginning. Social media is going to destroy that business. I've been, I've been to other states where you go into some places and it's just beautiful protection. I feel safe going anywhere. You know, they could open them up right now. And, but all this stuff is coming and I'm going to be doing a lot in, in, in the, with the, um, um, with the different governors I've talked to and stuff, because I, with all the pieces that are coming in this next week, you're going to see that, um, a very, it can't just be opening up. It has to be structured where the businesses know what are safe. So consumers, so people can come out and feel safe going into a place. I can't go into a place like I did yesterday and there's three, no one's wearing man, no one's doing nothing. And they're coming up to me and I'm going, hey, back off because I have to protect my family and stuff too. It's not just about me. And, but there is a way to do it. And I just wanted to tell you today, um, and I told, you know, I told everyone in that speech, you know, to keep in prayer and stuff. But I'm telling you, there's so many good things coming and the answers are right in front of us, but there's so many things being done wrong. And, and it just needs to have one state, I believe, 
set an example that this is how it opened because there are states that weren't even closed down like Iowa and there's got to be things that are working there that aren't working there but uh, and uh, that's all you know that's what I'm saying and I think uh, but the big thing is I really believe we're in the biggest revival in history and we have an opportunity here um, to bring so many people and God back into our country and into our lives. That's it. Mike, that was amazing. Thank you so much. You can preach and you are so right. Revival is coming. And I love how practical that was to just pick up the phone and talk to someone who might not know the Lord. That's amazing. Thank you for your time, Mike. Thanks for having me. And I'm telling you, we're going to get through this. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be different, but it's going to be amazing because millions and maybe even billions of people are going to come to Jesus because of this across the world. Now, I just want to share a bit about who Providence Heights is. So we are a nonprofit organization that will provide housing for women and children in need and also to offer jobs, counseling, and education. Now we're different in the fact that we have a real sustainable model. And what we're going to do is offer retail space, office space, and uh, apartments. And with that, we'll have um, three different things that we can be able to um, offer Providence Heights. And that is that we can offer jobs for the ladies, entrepreneurial skills, and then we're creating a revenue source from the retail office and affordable housing that will then create a revenue source for the facility. Now that is something Providence Heights likes to call capitalism for the poor. Now we know capitalism works, but not always for the little guy. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take capitalism, a excellent principle, and then we're gonna start funding the vision that's going to help those that are in need. And that way we don't have to continue to go to the government or to donors asking them for more, except to go into the next city and the next city and the next city. So we're so honored to offer that. And, you know, in this season, uh, the, the difficult part for us has been just to find a space. We want a place of excellence in a great zip code, and that's not easy to find. So we feel that we have um, located the place that we want, and we've been working toward that. But it feels like it has been forever. And in that season of waiting, I was just crying out to the Lord, and I said, God, you know, I don't mind waiting, but every day that we don't have a building is a day that these women and children don't have a home. And I struggle with that. So I really felt like what God put on my heart was I am building a foundation that will hold a skyscraper. Be patient and prepare yourself. So with that is what really has brought uh, this whole idea to you guys today is that I learned a lot in that season, and I want to share that with you while we're in quarantine because I think it is very applicable. So God started showing me, number one, I need to, to change some things around. It was, I, I needed to change it, going from wishing, waiting, wanting, and worrying into praying, preparing, providing. And as a result, it's just going to change your perspective. So... If you look at wishing to praying, you know, I wish my neighbor didn't have to be all alone while her husband's recovering from heart surgery. That's hard. I wish I didn't have to worry about my family's safety. I wish I knew that my friend's businesses would be okay. But you know what? Take it to prayer. Take it to God. God, heal my neighbor. Restore him. Lord God, I pray for, for our friends that, that and my family, that they are healthy, that they are safe, that coronavirus will come to an end. And God, I pray for people's businesses, God, that they will not only survive, but they will thrive when they come out of this. Take it to prayer. My second point is you're waiting into preparing. This changed everything for me. Because you know what? I started focusing instead of it that uh, just waiting on, on us to get that building. I started focusing on how do we prepare ourselves? We started looking at our programs, our processes, our procedures. What's it gonna look like when the ladies come in? Are we bringing the people around us? You know, we're creating our program right now. We've had um, Polly and Phil Seaton just 
diligently working uh, with us, creating what it's going to look like. And it's, it's a place of excellence. And we're going to be ready to receive them when that time comes. So my question to you is, what is one thing that you wish that you had time to do? You would love to get it done, but you just haven't had time to do it. You know, I started asking this question to people and I'm getting people telling me like one friend has a construction company and he's always wanted a website. Wow. What a perfect time for that. I have another friend with um, a boutique. Well, now she's doing gift cards and she's doing online business. That's awesome. I have um, another person that we know, a restaurant, that uh, probably never would have done Uber Eats if it weren't for this. But now he's doing Uber Eats. These are things that are going to take their business even further once all of this is over. That's creativity. So what can you be doing in this season that's going to further you? Now, my next point is turning your wanting into providing. This is a big one, guys. Now, in this season, it makes so much sense in, in your wanting. Like, I want to know that I'm going to be okay. I want to know where my bills are, are, are going to, uh, how they're going to be paid. Where's that money going to be coming from? Am I going to have a job when all of this is over? This is legit. This is real. We're not negating that. But you know what? It's just like that um, uh, beautiful story in the Bible, the parable about the, the sowing and the reaping. If you are holding back that seed because you're worried about um, surviving and where's your seed going to come from down the road, if you're concerned about that and you don't plant it into the ground, you're not going to get a harvest. And that's a problem. So think about how you can plant seed. Sow your seed in this season. That's going to make such an impact for you. And, and it's going to take you outside of yourself, and you're going to focus on God and his people. There's so many ways that you can do this. Mike Lindell, he's sowing seed by turning his business from a pillow company into making masks. One thing that we're doing is we're just buying gift cards from local businesses and then we're taking them over to um, like the fire department and the schools and we're giving those out to just um, first responders and, and that's blessing them also. So think about areas in your sphere, in your community, whether it's large or whether it's small, it doesn't matter. So seed, make an impact, be a blessing, pick the phone up, talk to people, encourage them and give them hope. My daughter and son-in-law, they own a um, wedding and photography um, a ph a photography and cinematography business called Z Studios. And they said the whole wedding industry has just been wrecked. And so I said, wow, what an opportunity for you to really make a, a difference, to be a light in the darkness, to encourage and inspire them. And you know what they did? They started doing Instagram Live. And the first person that they asked to be on their Instagram live was the number one coordinator who actually he's done um, events for the White House. And, and so they started doing these and just questioning, how are you getting through this? What are you doing? And with every one of them, depending on where the people were at, they've been able to talk about their faith. Like, when would they ever be able to do this before? What an opportunity. And so just what are ways that you can sow seed in this season right now? And, and then my last point is turning your worry into changing your perspective. Now, when you are focused on the wishing, waiting, wanting, and worrying, that's what you get. You just get worry. You get anxiety. You think about it all the time. You forget about the rest of the world and what people's needs are because you're focused on just surviving. And, and that's legit. I get it. But you know what? When you shift your focus and you put it on prayer and you put it on preparing for what you need to do next and, you, and thinking about others and providing for them in their place of need, it's just going to change your perspective. Now, we're all still stuck here in quarantine. I get it. We're stuck. But it's going to change things for you completely. So thank you so much for your time. And now I just want to introduce to you um, Kathy McMorris Rogers. So this is her eighth term representing the 5th District in Washington. She's a senior member of the Energy and Commerce Committee and leads on top Republican on the Subcommittee on Consumer Protection and Commerce. Her subcommittee has jurisdiction over most issues that are key to America 
winning the future and leading in the global economy. She is a top voice in innovation, energy, and technology. Policies like privacy and artificial intelligence and much more. As Kathy says, America is the best place in the world to innovate, save lives, and raise people's standard of living. Christine, thank you for your words of inspiration and hope. That was excellent. It was excellent. It was great to hear from Mike. I so appreciated your focus on really this being a time of prayer. You mentioned I'm in my eighth term in Congress. I've been there a while, but it was a couple of years ago that I was really convicted as to the importance of making prayer my number one priority. My number one priority is to pray and to bring people together to pray. And especially now, to pray for those God ideas. And that's what you were talking about. This is, this is such a season where God can speak to us about the God ideas. The God ideas are the ones that change the course of history. Good ideas are good, but one God idea is worth more than a thousand good ideas. So this is a time for us to be praying, to calling out to God, for him to speak to us about what those God ideas are. I really appreciated what Mike had to say about revival too. That's been part of my prayer. It's a prayer for revival, a new obedience to God. America was a God idea. And for us to be praying for the men and women in Congress, Republicans and Democrats, that they will seek God first, a new obedience to God for pastors in this country, for each one of us individually, to really be seeking that revival in our own hearts, that Pentecost, that, that will be a new obedience to God and what he would have for us. So this webinar, in my opinion, could not come at a more crucial time. Yes, there's a lot of hardship. There's a lot of loss right now. And you are absolutely right that we need hope. You know, fear shuts down the creativity. We need hope right now. We need to hear the stories of American ingenuity, American innovation. I hear it every day. And, and it does give me hope as people are coming up with solutions that are going to save lives, that are gonna provide the certainty that we need to reopen the economy, that give people hope and confidence and the ability to heal and to heal our bodies, our minds and our souls. So, this is the greatest public health crisis, the greatest economic crisis of our lifetimes. It's going to be the challenge of this century. But through it all, people are coming together and they're stepping up. And we need to celebrate that. We need to highlight that. So, you know, Mike shared his story about what he's doing, re reorganizing his entire manufacturing to produce tens of thousands of masks. Thank you, Mike, for what you're doing. Thank you for your leadership, your inspiration. I hear these stories every day in my community. I hear stories of a, a high schooler with a 3D printer that is making masks now and making you know, the PPEs, the, the personal protective equipment that our healthcare workers need. The small sign manufacturer that has reinvented his business to be able to provide those PPEs. The example of the local distillery who early on you know, switched it all over to start making the hand sanitizer when we were running out in our stores. The, the restaurants are closed and it was a, a locally run, um, man, a family run manufacturer, a produce manufacturer in our area who jumped into action. And, and it was a farmer who recommended selling his potatoes directly to families when they normally sell to the restaurants and it saved their business and it kept their families fed. You know, nationwide, we're seeing these examples of development of medical treatments and cures. There's no other country in the world that is better equipped to save lives. And that's why it is exciting to see these kind of solutions that are being developed. And it's really the public and the private sector coming together, together to leverage the power of supercomputing and AI, where America leads to develop the treatment for COVID-19. You know, uh, I am convinced that these kind of stories only happen in America because we are guided by God-given rights, those human rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Liberty, freedom is a God idea. 
and we are free to do good, not harm. Creativity comes from God the Father, the Creator. And it's those rights, it's the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is really, that's our foundation that gives us the ingenuity, the freedom, the hope that brings us together as a community. That's where American creativity and innovation is unmatched. So, you know, during this time, I have been reminded of what Franklin Graham said when he came to Spokane almost two years ago now. It was in August of 2018, and he held a, uh, a gathering to pray, to pray for America. And that night, I remember him saying, he said, you know, the Republicans can't solve it. The Democrats can't solve it. Only God can solve it. And right now, this is not about Republicans versus Democrats. This is really about us and the, and the belief, the recognition that God is with us in everything that we do. I thought Ivanka Trump had a great message when she reminded us all. She said, as we practice social distancing, we remember that God does not keep his social, his distance. So she's right, and we need to keep praying. We need to keep praying for those God ideas. We need to keep praying for wisdom and revelation and comfort because this, this really is a time of uncertainty. There's a lot of disruption, but I'm speaking every day with hardworking men and women who want to keep their families healthy and are eager to get back to work. So we got to counter the fear with hope and with love. So where there's a sense of despair, where there's a sense of fear, the fear of the unknown, the fear of the coronavirus, the fear of more isolation, the fear that, you know, taking a risk in the future to start a business, a small business, a, a restaurant won't happen again. We need to counter that fear with hope because fear shuts down creativity. And that's why I, I believe that forums like today are so important because the best way to counter fear is with hope and with love. Innovation and American creativity is, is where we're going to find the inspiration for the certainty that America will win the future and that we'll come back stronger than ever before. So we can't let fear mute these stories of hope. And now is really a time for us to think about what are we learning? What are we learning personally? What are we learning about our systems, the vulnerabilities, the weaknesses of our supply chains? What is the coronavirus exposing? It certainly took us out of our routines, took away a lot of our comforts. What do I find myself doing that I normally didn't? How am I going to think differently? What are those new strategies, those new assignments for a new era? What are the old things that I should let go of and leave behind? What are the new things that I should embrace? What's true in life? Not schools. I have three young kids, school-age kids at home. Not money. It's relationships. It starts with our relationship with God, our spouse, our family, our friends. So I just want to say thanks. I want to say thanks to all of you at Providence Heights for organizing this platform. I look forward to continuing to participate. I thought I would just close with the mantra that I started this year with, even before coronavirus. And the mantra is the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So thank you, good to be with you. Wow, Kathy, you are spectacular. That is uh, exceedingly abundantly above what I had, had hoped. And I, I knew that it would be amazing. So thank you so much. Now I want to introduce my dear friend, Laura Michelle Kelly. Now the secret is, as I shared with you earlier, that I like to share all the beautiful things that I get to have with people around me and people that I care about. And so Laura Michelle Kelly has actually been living in our home. She moved in just before the quarantine with her husband and her beautiful baby boy. And they have um, been looking for a home. They're new to Washington. And... So while you guys are all locked in quarantine, not getting to have live worship, 
I've had a Broadway singer in our house, and it's been incredible. So this is one other thing I just wanted to share with all of you. I want you to be blessed. Laura? The best way to invent your future, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. That's amazing. Does Laura have a voice of an angel or what? Thank you so much, Laura. I love and appreciate you. I just want to close in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for our time together. Thank you for our speakers. God, I pray for Mike Lindell, for his business. Thank you for his heart as it's just so turned to helping uh, your people, Lord God, and to serve you and to draw them to you, Lord God. I just thank you, God, that you bless his business. You give him great favor and a platform to speak your word. Thank you, Father, for Kathy McMorris Rogers, Lord. I thank you, God, that you just bless and increase her, Lord. I pray, Father, for just that spirit of boldness that she has, God, in in the um, house, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for her wisdom, her encouragement. 
Thank you, God, that she is a fierce leader for the kingdom of God. And I pray great blessings on her and her family. I pray, Lord, for everyone who is attending today, Lord God. I pray blessings, provision upon them, Lord. I pray for creativity in this in this um, crazy circumstance that we are experiencing right now. God, that, that it's an unprecedented time. And Lord God, that your hand would be with each and every one of us, that you would just give us guidance and direction. And God, I pray for your favor and, and creativity, Lord, that as we um, ponder how to prepare for your um, next season of life, God, that you would um, continue to show us, reveal those steps that you want us to take and help us, God, to, to walk that out. And I just pray for your um, financial provision and for all of the businesses, God. Thank you for your blessing, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.